I think this video is going to be the first one that goes up after Christmas Day. So hope you had a really good day if you celebrate Christmas Day. If you don't, I hope you had a really good festive period. And if you missed the last of my Christmas weekly vlogs that actually did go up on Christmas Day. So I will link that here for you and there'll be a playlist with all of them in if you want to catch up. And I actually really enjoyed putting them together. So hopefully there'll be more vlogs to come in the new year. But today I thought I would show you my 2016 makeup favourites, which is basically a very obvious video. Don't make a drinking game out of this. That would be a terrible, terrible idea. So I thought to spice it up a little bit, I would also throw it on my face at the same time, which kind of makes it a bit of a two in one, my 2016 beauty favourites, along with a mini everyday, my basic makeup uniform tutorial at the same time. And in previous years, I have broken this down into like a two, three part series and kind of gone on and on about all of my beauty favourites. This year, I have just stuck to makeup on my YouTube channel anyway. And the blog post that goes along with this video also has my favourites from hair care, body care and skincare. So if you want to see what things I've been loving from those categories, I'll make sure it's linked up in like the top line in the description box below. So check that out. But I'm going to start things off with primer. And there was two that I really enjoyed using this year, but I'd say my favorite one is the Too Faced Hangover RX Replenishing Face Primer. So I'm just going to throw that on now. I did really enjoy the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. That is amazing as well. That's definitely more makeup-y and glowy and sort of has, I mean, it doesn't have shimmers in it but it definitely leaves more of a slight glimmer to the skin whereas this has no shimmer in it at all and it's more of a really intensely moisturizing primer so really good if you're suffering from dehydrated or dry skin now in terms of base and foundations and tinted moisturizers and cc's and bb's and all those kinds of things there could only be one winner because this is basically pretty much all i've used as my foundation step the whole year. I even own it in two shades. I've got a winter shade that is fair and then a small summery shade which is light and then kind of in between seasons I mix the two. Looks a little something like this. It is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream and I'm currently using it in fair. You can see that it is practically empty. I've actually just picked up a new one of these, ordered it off of Sephora and waiting for it to arrive. I will show you in a beauty haul which I think is going to be in a couple of videos time and I really just had to have a fight to like get some out of the tube and I just like to apply it with the Zoeva 104 buffer brush because it is so quick and easy. If it needs any extra blending, I go in with the Beauty Blender. But for me, this has amazing coverage. It still looks very natural, but it's definitely quite a medium coverage foundation. It evens out any redness that I've got and sort of lightly covers any blemishes that I've got going on. But it is extremely glowy and kind of leaves quite a nice glossy look to the skin but it also has a decent amount of longevity as well i never get to the end of the day and look at my face and i'm like oh my god there's there's nothing left there's always a little bit of something there so to me this is absolutely everything that i could ever possibly want in a foundation this was the year that i kind of moved away from the urban decay naked skin concealer still really enjoy it however the estee lauder double wear i think it's called the stay in place concealer in extra light is really good, especially for blemishes because it's very creamy. It reminds me of the Bobbi Brown Creamy Concealer. Oh my God, mine is so messy. <laughs> it reminds me of the Bobbi Brown Creamy Concealer, but it's definitely got a bit more kind of malleable texture to it. It's not as cakey and thick. It's got a bit more slip to it, but really good for blemishes and dark circles, kind of whenever I've got really bad versions of either of those two things are going for this but also the glossier stretch concealer it's a real pain in the ass to get in the uk you basically can't get it you have to get it shipped over from a mate in um in the us but it is really good and this is definitely my go-to kind of everyday no makeup concealer but actually today i'm going to use a mix of the two that's what i do when i've got kind of some blemishes going on here i will use this and then kind of under my eyes i'll probably go for the gloss today. so with this i just apply it with my finger apply it on the areas that's kind of it for spotty areas and then on areas of more redness and under the eye i just go in with the stretch concealer and in this i use the shade light this is definitely kind of lighter coverage and a lot more glowier than the Estee Lauder, but sort of together, they're the perfect pair. And then, again, 
good old beauty blender. I personally really like this glowy finish, as you guys know, I like it when my whole face is basically one big oily, glossy looking thing. But if I had to use a powder, like sometimes I do, especially if I'm in London for the whole day and I really need my makeup to stay on my face. I still love the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Natural. I'm using this in the shade Light Plus currently, and I just take it on a big kind of fluffy powder brush, something like this Bobbi Brown one, and place it on areas of excess shine. I am so lazy when it comes to cheeks, I <laughs> most days just put a bit bronzer on and I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm done, out the door, go. But if I'm gonna kind of do the whole hog, then for contour, I always go back to the Kevin Aquan contour powder. Like, I just don't think anything beats this. It's the sculpting powder, I've got it in the shade medium here and also light. I think it's really great. This year they came out with a light and a dark, so now there's three shades. So here you've got light and here you've got medium. You can see there's like a slight difference between them. Light is obviously just a bit paler, but they still have the same kind of ashy tone to them. Like it's a little bit gray, a little bit brown. And I just think it's the best one. Like any of those contour powders that ever come in a duo or anything like that, not as good. These are so worth the money. And I think this year I actually repurchased medium. I, I mean, and I'd had it for the longest time. I still had it in the old packaging. So they really do last a long time. I'm going to take it on a like angled cheek brush and I'm going to use light which is the one that I'm currently using because this is more of my like winter winter tone but yeah I just think it's completely I wouldn't say it's completely foolproof you definitely could go too over the top with it but when I'm doing like a proper makeup, I really notice a difference when I use this. My relationship with blush is definitely a bit of a complicated one. I know you guys are always like, Anna, put some blush on your face, it really needs it. And I feel like it's when my parents used to tell me to wear a helmet when I was riding my bike and I didn't think it was cool. It's very cool, wear helmets when you ride bikes, like do it people. <laughs> but I would always be like, oh, I really don't wanna wear a helmet. That's how I feel like when you guys are like, Anna, I wear blush, I'm like, oh, I really don't wanna wear blush. I'm just not a big fan of it, I think, because I've got a lot of redness in my face anyway. I don't feel like I ever want to accentuate it. But if I do feel like <laughs> I want to accentuate it, especially in the summer, I tend to wear a bit more blush and I will throw on a tiny, tiny bit today. But I do like the Clinique Cheek Pop Blush Pops. I think they're really fab, like across the range, there's some really gorgeous colors, but Melon Pop is my favorite because I'm, I'm forever in the mood for a peachy pink when it comes to blush. If I want blush, it needs to be peachy pink. So I'm just gonna take that on a MAC 129 brush, Ooh, tiny amount, and just popping a little bit on. There you go, a little bit of rosiness, a little bit of rosiness, I can handle that. For highlighter, it has to be the Becca Shimmery Skin Perfector Pressed in the shade Moonstone. I have a feeling this was my favorite from last year as well. And I have a feeling it's pretty much one of the only highlighters that I now own. I got rid of a load just because I was literally reaching for this every single day and I was like, it's such a waste me having all these ones and I kind of rehomed them all. This is just the one for me. It's got a nice like yellowish tone to it, which I find again helps to cancel out any redness in my skin, but it just really looks very natural. It's not too in your face, it's not too shimmery. You're not gonna have like a line of highlighter going on. I tend to apply it generally all over my face because it can be used that subtly, but I just think it adds, oh, I just, I love it. Can you not already tell? The other Becca shades are really nice, but personally, if you've got my skin tone, this will be a good pick for you. Now we have a bit of a joint winner here because for bronzer, there's one that I use in the winter and then one that I use in the summer. In the summer, I used the, oh my God, you, all of the writing has rubbed off of this, but I think I remember it. It's the Cover FX Custom Enhancer Drops in the shade Sunkissed. Obviously, the crap thing about this is that the packaging rubs off and you have absolutely no idea what it is unless you remember but these are like little liquid drops i would just apply this onto the top of something like this clean buffing brush in fact i think this is what it was last used for and i would just sort of put it all over the face but basically focusing on the cheeks and adding a bit of color there a really good color for me it's quite warm quite orangey but in a nice way so i use that in the summer but in the winter i need something a little bit more toned down it got to the point where i was putting that on and i was like whoa okay that is that is not looking good but it's the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil, the light medium matte bronzer. Again, really good if we have similar skin tones. They also do this in just a chocolate shade as well. So I think there's different ones in the range for different skin tones, but this one works. Fab for me, and it hasn't got, I'm pretty sure it hasn't got any shimmer in. Light medium matte bronzer. Yeah, yeah, no, of course that's got any shimmer in. But this is what I do most days. So most days I'll just do that really quick base with the It Cosmetics and the Glossier concealer, and I'll just sort of 
throw this all over my face and I'll be like, yep, yeah, that's me done. So day to day, I don't tend to do that much to them. However, the Glossier Boy Brow in brown is really nice and it sort of sets them in place whilst not feeling crispy. It's definitely more of a wax and I really like that. I also like that the little brush is tiny. So I do this as more of a sticking down step rather than anything else. It's really good for like brushing them up as well and my brows are a bit longer. Why are you so hard to get in the UK? Eyeshadow primer isn't something that I have used all year round. I had a real lazy moment with it. So whenever I was wearing eyeshadow, it tended to be a cream product, which I always felt sort of dried down and didn't really need a primer anyway. Or I just dealt with the fact that it creased up after like an hour. And I was talking to Lily about this and I was like, I really need to repurchase the NARS. It's called the NARS Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. And she was like, Anna, just go get it. Like, why are you putting this off? When I picked it up a month or so ago and I was like, oh my God, this stuff is incredible. If like me, you've got extremely oily eyelids, this is the best one. Don't bother with like the Urban Decay. Don't bother with the Too Faced. Nothing beats this one. You put it on and it just like is a clear sort of white texture. It's got a doe foot as well, so it's really easy to apply. Then you can either use your finger, you can use a beauty blender. I tend to use my MAC 242 brush, which is all stuck together because of it. Oof, that's so gross. And I just kind of tend to blend it mostly in, and then I use my beauty blender as the final step. I have a few things to mention in the eyeshadow category because I just have the same eye look that I do. It's very easy. I tend to just wear one eyeshadow, it tends to be a brown, <laughs> either like a warm brown or more of like a neutral kind of matte brown. All over the lid, I just blend it kind of quite high and do a bit of blending and that is it. And so there's a few different ones that I use kind of depending on where I want to take it. So the first one is the Burberry Sheer Eyeshadow in the shade Pale Barley. I feel like I mention this in every single yearly favourites video. Probably for like the last three years of my life, it's still going strong. This is still the same one, I've never repurchased it. I've hit pan and it's kind of what I reach for when I want a very lazy, slightly more cool toned, neutral eye. It's very easy to apply, it's got like a light shimmer to it and it's just, I do like a MAC 217 all over the lid done. If I want something a bit more moody, a bit more neutral and I'm going for more creams all over my face and I want to go for a cream eyeshadow as well, I'll go for the MAC Pro Long Wear Paint Pot in the shade Groundwork. This to me is very minimal, no makeup makeup, very Parisian, very like I just woke up like this. I really enjoy that one. I take that on a MAC 242, apply it all over my lid and then just blend it out with my finger. If I'm going for more of an evening out and I want something with a bit more pizzazz on the eyes, then I go for the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Eyeshadow in the shade Betty. This is like a full on metallic, bronzy gold, and you can just do quite a light wash on the lids. If you put in like quite a fluffy brush and just blend it out, you could get more of like a shimmery kind of gloss on the lid or you can use a MAC 242, so some kind of flat brush, apply it all over the lid, blend out the edges and wait for it to dry. It lasts really well and I just think it's a very flattering shade, especially in the summer when I'm a bit more tan. Now this one, the kind of overall winner, I feel a bit bad about because it's definitely quite a recent addition in my collection, but for me, I've just been wearing it non-stop since I got it and I think I'll be wearing it pretty much for the rest of next year as well. I've got a little duo here, it's from MAC, this is one of their like refillable Pro Pan palettes and I've got Sober on this side and then I've got MAC Saddle here. Now you guys know I've mentioned this in favourites video, I've mentioned it everywhere, Saddle is where it is at. I know it's quite hard to get hold of because I have a feeling that it's a pro shade but I'm going to take MAC Saddle on a MAC 214 brush, apply that all over the lid and then just blend it out in the crease. And I do find this goes on better with some kind of base on the lid because it is a matte, it just requires that bit of base to make it blend very evenly. So I add the bulk of the colour with the MAC 217 and then I take like the MAC, is this the 224? With a bit more colour on it and then take it higher up 
into the crease. Now eyeliners aren't something that I wear every day but I do quite like that extra bit of definition on the outer corner of the lash line sometimes, especially for more of an evening look. And actually the H&M Colour Essence Eye Pencils are awesome. I was like swatching all my eye pencils the other day, like trying to get rid of some. And these ones, I was like, the texture of these is beautiful. They are like full on, beautifully creamy, extremely long lasting. For me, they're up there with the Charlotte Tilbury, what ones are they called? The Rock and Coal. Ooh! So shimmery, so festive, so beautiful. I'm actually not gonna throw eyeliner on today. I'm just not feeling in the mood, but they are so good and really long lasting and they're 3 dollars absolute bargain. My favourite mascara of the year has to be the Heroin Make, I think it's called the Long and Calm Mascara. I picked it up in LA last year and it was, oh my god. Give me a shout if you have a reputable seller because I would love to pick up another one of that. So kind of since that, when I've just been a bit of a floozy using different things, I'm currently using the Clinique High Impact Waterproof Mascara. It's fine, it's not great. I'd say aside from the Heroin Make one, I did also really enjoy the It Cosmetics. Tightline mascara, that is fab, really tiny brush, so really good if you want to get very natural but full looking lashes. But I'm gonna throw this on, but it's definitely not a love. For lips, there are obviously like a million and one different categories, but I've really tried to streamline it down. I haven't included liquid lipstick because I'm just not really a big fan of them. Haven't included lip gloss, although I should have because the Clarins Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector is awesome and I'm still wildly in love with that. Also, lip pencil I haven't included because I just don't really use them that often. Lip balm. I'm still on the by Terry Bonda Rose, like that is just to me the most beautiful lip balm. I put it on, it's just utter luxury in a lip balm. Yes, extremely expensive, but I find that it lasts such a long time, like I've had this pot for well over a year. It says that it lasts 12 months on the back but it's still going strong. In terms of a bold lip, I'm still all about the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencils. The shade Damned has to be my favorite. This is the one, where was I wearing it? I was wearing it in a vlog and people were like, what are you wearing on your lips? If ever I'm wearing like a berry purpley tone, then you can bet your bottom dollar it is that. But today I'm gonna go for a nude and I've got two different ones here to pick between. The Chanel Rouge Coco Lipstick in Adrienne. I mean, come on. You knew this one would be in there. I've used it so much. I've made it into like a really strange shape. I got this out at dinner the other night and people were like, what have you done to that lipstick? That looks very strange. But I do use it all the time. And also the Charlotte Tilbury, I think this is one of the Matte Revolution lipsticks in Super Cindy, is a really great colour as well. It's a little bit more peachy. Mm, might go quite nice with the eye. But I think I'm going to go for the Chanel one. Yeah, Chanel one. It's just my favourite nude. I would say it has even overtaken Matte Patisserie. I know. But I just like it hasn't got too much shine. It actually hasn't even got that much colour to it. And it's got a real balm-like texture as well, so it never dries out the lips, and I love that. So those are my 2016 favourites. Did I surprise you with anything? Probably not. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you're enjoying the festive period and taking time out, and if not, just relaxing and chilling, getting ready for the new year. I'm very excited. I will link up my last video for you here, which, like I mentioned, was my last Christmas week to vlog so if you want a bit of festive flavor that is there also the blog post that goes with this video like i mentioned is my favorites from the year from skincare body care and hair care and the subscribe button if you haven't already that would be awesome thank you for watching and i'll see you soon bye